Well, praise the Lord. We want to do something a little bit different today on our podcast, on our Facebook Live, on YouTube. We want to not just give the Lord a great hand clap of praise, which we love to do, but we want to give every single one of you that are connecting today, we want to give you a great thank God for your life. We welcome you today. We celebrate you. We just declare that God is crowning your life with good things. He's filling your mouth with good things. Isn't it good to know the Bible says, forget not. There's so many things the Bible says about our mind. Forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of thy iniquities. The enemy would love for you and me to forget who we really are. The enemy would love for you and me to forget that Jesus didn't die to forgive 98% of our sins. But somebody just go ahead and say, Lord, I remember today you have forgiven all of my sins. You've healed all of my diseases. You fill my mouth with good things. My strength is renewed like the eagle. And I declare, Don, today, whoever you are that are watching, you are not the same person you were yesterday. God is taking you through this school of ministry from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and from faith to faith. Yes, and of course, so many of the people that we read about in the Bible, and we read in 1 Corinthians 10, it's written for our uh, instruction. They won a, fought a good war, but they really did lose significant battles of the mind. Whether you read about Asa, whether you read about Hezekiah, even about beloved Josiah, Demas. But you know, in Acts 13, 13, John Mark, I think being buffeted, he left. But hallelujah, he made a comeback. Amen. He was willing to be totally forgiven and restored. And we read Paul saying, bring me Mark for he's profitable for the ministry. This beautiful concept of having 100% pure, 100% clean, what a standard. He's putting the bar where it belongs up here. What a great God we serve because he said, we must fix our minds on victory. Yes. Not on defeat. Yes. God wants us to fix our mind daily on His goodness, you, on His love, on His joy, on His provision. We must fix our mind on victory. Just imagine you would have told us, fix your mind on defeat. Come on. That would be miserable, but no, we have, and today I decide to fix my mind on the total victory Jesus won on the cross for me and for my family. My God, well, I can't wait to get into the Word of God today. Brother Srilla was taking us right in to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, girding up the loins of your mind. If you are ready, I want you to say, I am ready. And let's welcome together God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. The Apostle Peter wrote to a group of Christians that were severely distressed. They were undergoing tremendous trials and tremendous tests. Peter admonished them. First Peter 1 13. He said, Gird up the loins of your mind. You want to overcome the distress? You want to overcome the onslaughts of the enemy? The trials? Gird up the loins of your mind. Remember how we studied a few days ago how Paul wrote the book of Ephesians from prison chained to a Roman soldier the first piece 
piece of armor that a Roman soldier puts on as he prepares for battle is his belt. Strange. You know why? Because the belt tied around the soldier's waist gathered the short tunic that he wore. It kept the breastplate in place. And the belt also held the sword in its place. Without the belt, the soldier was loose and weak. His loins enabled him to fasten his armor close to him, whereby he was strengthened and he was better able to fight. Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. Tighten them up. Gird them up. When the Roman soldier put the belt on, it indicated he was ready for the battle. He never tightened it up, brother, until it was time to fight. Turn up the loins of your mind. It's time to fight. When he loosened it up, brother, and he slackened it, it meant he was going off for duty. The lines refer to the chief seat of bodily strength. The body is knit to the lines. If the lines fail, the whole body fails. The lines we are to gird up, to strengthen, to get ready for of life flow out of it's the battlefield it's where our thoughts our emotions our wills our desires our understanding our reasoning power our intentions are proverbs 23 7 has a man thinketh in his heart so is he. But we have the
the mind of Christ. principalities this is what he told them and again I'm not reading to you from the King James I'm reading to you from another translation which I always do which takes us into the original and amplifies the scripture for us in a way that we can grasp it and understand its true meaning. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God. But the literal translation says, put on God's whole armor. Now, before I read the rest of that scripture, let me give you a translation of what that word put on means. It means to be clothed in. Paul says, be clothed in God's arm. Now let's continue to read it. The armor of a heavy armed soldier. Now, I don't know what it says. I probably should look it up in the King James. Then I turn to it quickly and see what the difference is here. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right, now let me show you why this is not enough for us. Put on God's whole armor, be clothed in. Now listen to what the literal translation says, 
the armor of a heavy armed soldier. Now, here's the key, which is not even in this King James Version, but here's the key, which God supplies. See, that's what the original Greek gives us. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies. Now, you have to understand something about this. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but Paul, when he wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he wrote it while he was in jail, chained to a Roman soldier. And he had plenty of time to observe that Roman soldier day by day chained in that prison. And he saw parallel. All truth is parallel. He saw a parallel, and this is where he got the revelation and the inspiration to give us this fantastic truth. He saw a parallel between the Roman soldier who was prepared to fight a natural battle and a parallel between what it would take for a spiritual soldier in the army of God to be prepared to fight a spiritual battle. Now, something else. Please put this deep in your spirit. Let me read the whole scripture from the original and then tell you something very important. Be clothed in God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies. You have any idea? I just can't get off of this for a half a second. You have any idea of how important it is to know that the armor that you have as you go out on the battlefield is not the armor of the natural man, but it is the armor which God supplies. Amen. That you may be able successfully to stand up. Say the word successfully. Amen. Don't be afraid of it. Some of you people are so spiritually minded that you're afraid of success. Some of us think that success is a dirty word because we sort of mirror it with an image of worldliness. How many of you know that God wants his people to be the most successful people in all the world? Put on. with God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy laden soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. 
this spiritual armor which protects us, which makes us powerful, which makes us immovable, which makes us invulnerable to any attack that Satan may want to throw at us. Let him come from the rear, we're invulnerable. Let him attack us from the top, bless God, we're invulnerable. Let him come from the right side, let him come from the left side, bless God. It doesn't make any difference, we are invincible. Why? Because the armor we have is fashioned by God. God has made every provision, say every provision, that enables us to go into the battle and be victorious over all of Satan's strategies, all of Satan's attacks, all of Satan's deceptions, no weapon that is formed against us can prosper. And it's important for us to understand that when the battle rages, and how many of you know the battle is raging in your life right now? It's important for us to know in the midst of the battle that Jesus has already destroyed the works of Satan and he has already broken his power over us and you and I are actually facing an enemy that has already been defeated. Now, our victory depends on Say this after me. I 
You see, I think we've got to understand something. You know why the church is so weak? Because they are trying to fight this battle of Satan. God never did pit us up against the devil. That battle he reserved for himself. the wisdom he gives us the anointing he gives us the power so when this devil who comes with his characteristics which are deception which are lies and he tries to make himself out to be something that he is not he has no power he's like this little handkerchief here brother look at This is going deep in your spirit. Say it after me. God has planned. You understand what that means? He's planned. He has planned. He has planned. He has planned. planned. for me to have the same strength, the same perseverance, the same powerful endurance, the same powerful weapons that Jesus experienced 2,000 years ago. God never intended you and I to face Satan and evil powers and principalities and wickednesses in our own strength. He has provided us mighty weapons which he fashioned. Write it down, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. The weapons we fight. Give it to you again. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have, now get ready for a spiritual explosion here. They have the divine power. Who fashioned these weapons? Come on, who fashioned these weapons? Who fashioned these weapons? Then listen to it. They have the divine
if you're going to take something captive, usually what is it? If you're in a war. It's your enemy. We take captive, Paul says. We bring the enemy into jail. We lock him up. Glory, glory. Now, what do we take captive? Let me read the scripture to you. We take captive every. There are two places in this battlefield that you and I are going to go into. Man, first of all, listen, God is a spirit saved. Man is a spirit. We're not our house of muscle and bone. The devil knows where the battlefield is. It's not on the surface. I'm talking about for the Christians now. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about you and I. The devil knows there's no way he can succeed as long as he just comes at If the devil is going to succeed in your life, he's going to have to come from the inner man. In the name of Jesus, put both hands up to him right now and tell him, Father, I receive the weapon of my warfare. I receive that which you have. Here's where we left off this morning. Say it, divine power. They have divine power to demolish strongholds, not just to defeat them, but the weapons. Here we are clothed with the armor that God supplies. Here we are in this battle using the weapons that God has put in our hands. And God says those weapons have the power. They have divine power. Glory to God. I don't know what you're going through right now, where you're coming from, but I'm going to tell you, you've got divine power through the weapons that God has provided to demolish your enemy. What do we do? We demolish arguments. Let's continue the scripture. We demolish every pretense that sets itself up 
against the knowledge of God. And now we're going to move into the battlefield. We take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Now I want you to put that word thought into your spirit. If you're writing notes, write the word thoughts down. I want you to raise your right hand to the Father and I want you to say this with me tonight. I have the power, have the power to totally, totally demolish, demolish the, power the power of the enemy so they are non-existent. It's important that we understand that victory is not automatic. And it's important that we understand that victory is not guaranteed just simply because you have been born again and you're a child of God. I know this is hard to understand, but it's true. And even because you have the Spirit of God inside you, that does not mean that you are automatically going to have the victory over the tests, the trials, the temptation, the lies, and the attacks of the enemy. I wish it were true. I wish it were so. I wish it were different. I wish all you had to do was come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give your life to him. Get saved. Be born again. I wish that that was all that was necessary. But it is not true. That's only the beginning. Our victory comes when we arm ourselves and we know how to resist the power of the enemy and we are programmed for aggressive action. I'm going to keep reading this scripture to you probably a dozen times. Why? Because your victory is not guaranteed. Your victory is not automatic unless you are willing to stand up here and become a soldier and press the battle. I don't think you heard what I said. There are thousands of you, and excuse me for talking to the television audience, but I have to do this. You're living a defeated life simply because of one reason. You allow the enemy to win in your spiritual life by default. It's not because he has greater power than what you have. It is because you don't pick up the battle and you don't line up as a soldier and you're not willing to press the battle. And if you're not willing to press the battle, he'll do it for you. I don't think you heard what I said. You've got to become violent. If you don't believe it, you ask any soldier who's ever fought a war, and you tell me if he is going to overcome his enemy by sitting in the foxhole and being passive. This church of Jesus Christ had better put off that spirit of passiveness and complaint. 
complacency and get mad at the devil and be willing to press the battle. going to read the scripture to you again Matthew 11 12 and from you're going to probably memorize this before we leave here and from the days of John the Baptist until the present time the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault and violent men, violent men, say it with me, violent men. See, some of you can't even say it. That's how weak you are. <laughs> Bound by your tradition. How many people in this building here have got problems and needs and circumstances that you got to have God do something about and you want him to do it now. Yeah. Come on, let me, well then what are you sitting there for? Let's get a little violent about it. Yeah. It's not gonna rain out of heaven on you, brother. Don't kid yourself. I don't care whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, half-baked over, charismatic, Pentecostal. I don't care if you don't start doing stirring up. If you don't start stirring up what Paul wrote to Timothy, if you don't start stirring up the gift which is in you. Matthew 11, 12, let me continue to read it to you from the original. And violent men do what? Seize him. Say the word seize. Let me see you start doing some seizing here tonight. Come on. Come on. Start by opening your mouth and say seize it. Say I'm going to seize it. You're going to stir up the gift. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to stir it. Come on. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to seize it. I'm going to seize it. I'm going to seize it. You're going to press it. You're going to press it. You're going to press it. We're going out the battlefield. We're going to press the battle. Now, our problem today is that most Christians really do know that there's a battle raging. I really don't care what traditional background we have or are. Most know that there is a battle raging. But there are three things about this spiritual battle that they do not understand. One, they don't know where the battle is taking place. And if you cannot locate the battlefield, you can't fight in this battle. Second, they don't know how Satan, who is the arch enemy, they don't know how he is attacking. And if we don't know how the enemy attacks. We don't know how to prepare for the battle. Thirdly, they know there's a battle raging, but they don't know how to defeat him. Well, somebody just go ahead and say, God has planned for me to have the same strength, the same perseverance, the same powerful endurance, the same powerful weapons that Jesus had 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah, and also he's planned for us to use 
those weapons because he says there, of course, we read in Psalm 78, uh, verse 9, the children of Ephraim, they were armed with all kinds of bows, but they turned back in the day of battle. But I was privileged for 34 years to see Dr. Srilla wage this offensive warfare. And sons of his also, like uh, Io Richifer of Nigeria, I remember when he preached a message where he said the Christians very often don't want to do anything, they just want to claim everything. But he said in Obadiah, there's a word that is not claim, but possess, make a determined effort to take. And that proactive, violent, spiritually violent spirit, I have seen it open up nations, but I've also seen it open up and resolve family problems, financial struggles, etc. as you receive this 100% victory in your mind. Greg, Don, what a revelation that the battle is not between the devil and us. The battle and the fight, it's between the devil and God. Mm. And God has already won the battle through Jesus Christ. And we are not fighting an enemy that we need to conquer and that we need to defeat. We are fighting an enemy that is already be conquered. He has already been defeated. The only thing as Don said, we need to put on. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The armor of God and that armor is not a human armor. This is a supernatural armor. So we are really superman and superwoman. And so when the devil tried to come with his little lie, we are well equipped to discern it and say, Satan, those lies, those garbage are not for my mind. My mind is only filled with the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah, with the word of the living God. My and God. then we have total victory. You know, it's so simple. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Father, we thank you today, Lord, for your servant, Morris Cirillo. God, we thank you for the word of the living God today that does not return void. Lord, you said that if we would be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make our requests known to you. God, that your peace that passes all understanding would guard our heart, guard our mind. And so, Father, today, God, every family need, God, every financial need, God, every strategy that the enemy would try to work against the minds of your people. Lord, we declare the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord's. And so we cast our cares upon you today because you care for us. God, we believe that you care for us. God, we believe your will is not fear. Your will is not stress. Your will is not trials and hardship. But God, your will is to show yourself strong on our behalf, to be an ever present help in our time of trouble. So Lord, I thank you that help Lord is on the way. God, I thank you that help is in our midst right now. And Lord, we declare today, Lord, that you are a shield about us. You're the glory and the lifter of our head. My brother, my sister, I just want to encourage you today. Lift your head up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Lift your head up. The word of God is coming to your life. You'll never be the same again. Lord, we thank you for this school of ministry in Jesus name. And everybody said amen and amen. Now listen, we're about at the halfway point. Tomorrow is going to be powerful. What an incredible message. Brother Srilla was going to remind us that the power of sin was broken 2000 years ago. And so now sin and because sin has no dominion over us, guilt has no dominion over us, fear has no dominion over us, the power of death and the fear of death has no Hallelujah. dominion over us. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so tomorrow is going to be a powerful impartation. Sin has no dominion. The mind of Christ, which is the mind that we are called to have. Somebody say, I have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is 100% victorious. It's gonna be a powerful message tomorrow. Where are we heading? Stay connected. Seven incredible days of this winning the battle for your mind school of ministry. And then we wanna send you your end of course certificate of completion quiz so that you can proudly receive. What a reminder for the devil to see your name on a certificate with the name of Morris Cirillo, Teresa Cirillo, David Cirillo, and the certificate simply says, in recognition of your successful, how many of you know that God has sentenced you to be successful? Your successful completion. So stay connected, complete this thing. We're in day uh, four, tomorrow is day five. Your successful completion of winning the battle for your mind. We hereby award you this certificate of completion. Your name will be on this certificate. It's signed by David Cirillo, signed by Teresa Cirillo. And those of you that are taking the course before and you're taking it again, you're gonna receive a special master's certificate of completion. What a mighty master we serve. And then we can't wait to celebrate all of you here at Legacy. We have some announcements coming. Stay tuned to the podcast, stay tuned to the Facebook, the YouTube. We'll be sharing with you in the days and the weeks to come some very exciting opportunities for you to come to experience Legacy, to be honored, to be celebrated. You see the picture right now of the first group of about 30 of our Facebook, YouTube, podcast, School of Ministry graduates who came, who received their cap and gown and who were celebrated and honored. Teresa Cirillo sat right there on the front row and all of our uh, delegates here were just so thrilled and we can't wait to see you here. I do want to encourage you, take advantage of the uh, resources. Brother Cirillo's incredible prayer study reference Bible. It is an incredible resource. In just a day or so, Brother Sroll is gonna be talking to us, Don and Mark, and this is one of my favorite messages. One of the great strategies that God has used in my life for winning the battle for your mind is filling your heart and filling your mind with the Word of God. This is a living Word. This is not a book that you just read once like Mark was saying. This is a book that has life, that has health, that has peace, that has the presence of God, the plan of God for your life. And it literally is our food. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Brother Strillo's incredible life work of teaching on the subject of prayer. I mean, the power of prayer, the power of the word are two incredible weapons for not just winning, but I'm talking about making a permanent change in your life where you will never recognize yourself. Do you know the difference between Abel and Cain was really about this much. They both brought their lives before God, brought their offering before God. The difference in their effort was this, but the difference in their results was this. You see, there is not a very big distance between where you and I are right now and to where we can be in an incredible experience of God's approval and blessing, prosperity on our life. So we just want to congratulate you because you are making that move by being a part of this School of Ministry on Facebook, on the podcast, on YouTube every day. 
And I declare that your reward is in this school of ministry. Your reward is on this podcast, on this Facebook page, on this YouTube channel. Don Mark, just before we go, is there anything we want to say? We want to just let the people know how excited we are for them. We just commend them as we started by applauding them. And I'm so excited about tens of thousands because we think thousands of times a day, tens of thousands of negative, deceptive, pessimistic thoughts that you are not going to be thinking even in the next 24 hours, but instead this expectation of victory. And as Mark said, the victory of Jesus Christ. This is not a positive thinking course. This is getting connected with divine power and divine essence. Amen. And I just would like to tell you, if you know anyone speaking French and you would like to give him a gift, tell him that yes. Maurice Sevelo Francophony is alive and well on yes. Facebook and YouTube and soon podcast, and they can follow the teaching of Dr. Serilo every day in French. Hallelujah. Y también en español, Ministerios en Español de Maurice Serulo en Facebook. En este momento, ellos están pasando también por cursos de la Escuela de Ministerio. And so as we go off today, I just want to encourage you with the Word of God, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is what you and I are doing, so we can expect these results. But the Apostle Paul encouraged us, do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It didn't say be ye transformed by a miracle breakthrough, by an incredible dramatic experience. Those things happen. We know Paul on the road to Damascus. We know Moses. We know every single one of us want God to give us a great experience. But the Bible says, in addition to the experience, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. And so on behalf of our team here, this is Greg Morrow congratulating you. You are not being conformed to the image of this world, but you and I together, we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Father, we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody that believes it, say amen, amen. and amen. We will see you tomorrow live from Legacy as we continue the incredible privilege of the Mars Cirillo winning the battle for your mind, School of Ministry. We'll see you tomorrow live from Legacy.